Hi there, and welcome to my physics course, and here's my lesson on projectile motion. Let's go ahead and get started by looking at an example where we have an object that is uh, rolling off of a table. So we're looking at sort of a marble or some sort of uh, steel ball. And we have the same sort of object that is falling straight down at the same time. So first off, let's establish that regardless of the size of the object, the mass of the object, all objects will fall at the same rate. So if I have two marbles next to each other, in fact, let's say that I have a tiny marble and a very large uh, steel ball, and I drop each of them, they will both fall at the same rate, regardless of their mass, regardless of their size, assuming that air resistance is negligible. And at slower speeds especially, uh, air resistance is negligible. And so in this case, we have a marble rolling off of the table and another marble that is dropping. They both will fall at the same rate, vertically. So that rate is 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning that for every second of free fall, the object will have changed its speed by 9.8 meters per second. And we usually will just round that off to 10 meters per second squared. And I just so happen to have an initial velocity here of this object rolling off of the table at 10 meters per second. So if this object is rolling off the table here at a rate of 10 meters per second horizontally off to the right, and this object is not moving at all, left or right whatsoever, the moment that this object falls off the table, this object will be released and dropped simultaneously at the same time. And what this diagram is meant to represent is that as time progresses, each one of these, so let's just say that this is uh, time interval one and have a time interval one. This one's two, there's two, three, this one would be three, and you can start to see the separation now. Five and five and so on. And so you can see that with each time interval, each of them have dropped, that is not what I meant to do, each one has dropped the same distance vertically Okay, so as time progresses, they will drop the same distance vertically. They will have picked up the same vertical speed. They will have changed their speed vertically by the same amount, and that's what's key. And so with that, I'd like to show you an actual example of that happening. And so here I have something that I've demonstrated. So let's take a look. All right, so in that example, you should have seen the two yellow balls that were falling at the same rate. Uh, from the left, we had the one that was uh, being shot out, and it's being shot out at approximately four or five meters per second. And they both fall vertically at the same rate, and at any point in time, you'll see that they have the same height. Uh, if you want, you can go back and reverse and, and take a look at that. So let's take a, a look at a little other specific example of projectile motion. If you are shooting projectiles all at the same rate of speed, so let's just say they have a projectile launcher of some kind that launches at a rate of 20 meters per second per se. And so uh, what angle would shoot the farthest? And I think that most people would intuitively realize that 45 degrees will actually shoot the farthest. So that would be this angle here, okay, the 45 it's probably not exactly uh, to scale here, but the 45 degree angle would go the farthest before it lands. And of course, by the way, this is assuming that it will start at ground level and finish, right? It would finish at ground level. So 45 degrees would go the farthest. Another key point here is that for whatever angle you shoot at, given you're going to still shoot at the same speed, there's always another angle that will hit the same spot, the same distance. Again, assuming that you're shooting uh, from ground level and starting uh, and also landing at ground level. 
And so in this case, I have 30 degrees as an example and 60. So notice that they both add up to, to 90 degrees. So they're always reflections upon 45. So 80 degrees, uh, 80 degrees and 10 degrees will hit the same spot, 70 and 20 and so on. And so if I learned this when I was in middle school, snowball flight, throw one real high, the guy you're aiming at looks up and you throw one real low and they're both gonna get there simultaneously at the same spot, right? And so that's what winds up happening. Let's look at another example. So here we have uh, a cannon of some kind that is being shot at a monkey. Why a monkey, I don't know. It's just what's always been used and so I'm gonna stick with it. And so we're shooting at this monkey. We're going to give him a banana. We're just gonna be nice to him and we're gonna, we're gonna shoot a banana at him. Okay, and so when we shoot that banana at him, we're aiming directly at him. In fact, we're gonna take a, a laser a laser scope, right? We're gonna scope right to him and and aim right at him. Let's 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 aim more at his eyes. And so uh, when we shoot at him and this banana goes right along that laser path that we had scoped, does it actually hit him in the face? No, it doesn't. It would go below him. Now, what if he knows this because he's a smart uh, smart monkey? And the moment that I launch, he realizes that it's not going to get to him. So the moment I launch, he lets go of whatever tree branch he's, he's holding on from. Mm -hmm. And so he is going to fall vertically, and he's going to fall vertically at the same rate, uh, in the same amount of time as the banana will. So essentially, here's what's going to happen is that in the first second of free fall, he will fall five meters. Now, this is clearly not really to scale here, but uh, why five meters? Well, if you're looking at AP physics, you'd be looking at the equation of x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. Or if you're looking at it from a more simplistic standpoint of perhaps a more basic physics class, you'd be looking at an equation that looks like d equals one half a t squared, which if you notice, these are really the same equation. Uh, we're really just looking at this part. This is the initial velocity uh, in the vertical direction. We're not really concerned about that for this guy because he doesn't have any vertical velocity initially. And we're not concerned about his initial displacement. So basically what I'm looking at is how far will he, will he fall vertically? What is his change in position in the vertical direction? And that's what this is here given that he's accelerating at a rate of about 10 meters per second squared, and he's in free fall for one second. And so we would find that he falls five meters in that one second. So with that said, if he is falling for a time of one second, and the banana is also in free fall for one second, the banana is going to fall five meters off of its original path, the same as how he falls off of his original path his original path just isn't moving. But he is going to fall five meters off of his original path in that one second. Or if it takes two seconds, if he's so far away that it takes two seconds to get to him, he will fall 20 meters, right? Plug in two seconds for time. He's gonna fall 20 meters and this banana is going to wind up falling 20 meters off of its original path. And the same would be true for if he's so far away that it takes three seconds away uh, to get to him, it would be a 45 meter drop. And so the path of the banana is going to look something like this. Of course, that's not my prettiest drawing, but it works. And so the banana is going to follow this projectile path while the monkey being dropped at any position, if he drops if he lets go at the same time that the uh, banana is being shot, he will in fact catch the banana in each example. So what do you say we go hunting for monkeys?
If you listen carefully, you can hear the projectile hit the monkey. Did you hear the monkey? I did too. Let's look at one last example. So let's say that you meet Superman and Superman is not such a nice guy and he takes you up into space and he just, he has special powers. So Superman floats there, right? He has special powers. He floats there and he lets go of you. What happens? Do you float there as well? You're out in space. There's no air. You're far away from the earth and you're just in space. And in fact, really, what is space? Let's address that for a moment. To be in space, you just need to be above the Earth's atmosphere. And so how far away from Earth is that? How far should I put him for there to be no atmosphere, to be in space? And it would be uh, proportional. It would be like right about there, like his foot would be. It's really close, actually. The atmosphere is very thin. But if he takes you, and in fact, the uh, International Space Station probably is somewhere about there right now. It's very, very close. So if Superman were to take you up in a space and just simply let go of you, would you float? And the answer is no. The farther you get away from the Earth, the slower the rate of acceleration is, but it's not that dramatically less. Uh, instead of being 9.8, it's probably somewhere closer to uh, 7, 7.5 uh, out for the International Space Station. However, it's a perceived weightlessness. The reason is, if you brought Superman down and he's kind of showing you how to throw a ball, he's going to throw a ball, and in fact, let's say that you throw the ball first. So here you are, and you're gonna throw, let's say you've got a red ball. And you're gonna take this red ball and you throw it, and you throw it as far as you can, and it goes there. And at that point, you don't need to consider too much about Earth's curvature. But Superman is who he is, and he really is not impressed with your throw. So he throws a ball, and it goes all the way out here. And so at some point, you need to take into account Earth's curvature, right? This is if the Earth was flat, but uh, Kyrie Irving is in fact wrong. The Earth is not flat, and it will in fact go past the, uh, the horizon. So then Superman really shows off, right? He's not a super mean guy. He's not gonna just drop you. He's gonna throw you into orbit. And so here you go, you go into orbit, flying around, and he's gonna throw you so fast that the path that you will take will be something along these sorts of lines that rather than falling closer to Earth, well, didn't really mean to do that. Okay, well, okay, should. That would be really mean if he did that to you. But what if he threw you so fast that instead of getting closer to Earth, you wound up always falling, but following the curvature of the Earth. So it turns out that the speed necessary to make that happen is about 8,000 meters per second. And so what's happening, let's say that you're, he throws you, and what happens in that first second? So in that first second, you go out this way about 8,000 meters, and then you drop, let's see, how far do you fall in that first meter? Five meters. And so that just happens to follow the curvature of the Earth. That ratio of the out versus down distance follows the curvature of the Earth, and you would be a satellite. That's all satellites are. They're just objects that are in orbit. So keep in mind that things in space do not just float there. In order to prevent yourself from falling closer to the Earth, you would have to be moving so fast along the tangent or 
uh, parallel to the surface of the Earth that you never actually get closer. But be clear, you are in fact falling. You're just never actually getting closer to the Earth, but you are technically falling. You are in free fall. You are uh, falling past the horizon. Free fall is something that has uh, the force of gravity acting on it and nothing else. And so you're always just falling past the horizon and you are in fact accelerating uh, at a rate fairly close to 10 meters per second squared. So those are the examples I wanted to go over on projectile motion and I hope that uh, was fairly clear and hope you learned something. You guys have a good one. Until next time.